Welcome back to another episode of the Scoreboard Podcast. We have the UFL. Two more mandatory weeks left, even though, well, the season's over, at least for the regular season. We have the exact playoff picture already two weeks ahead of time, and still we have to finish out these predictions. We still have a lot of interesting things and a lot of interesting uh, developments going into the playoffs that we have to talk about. Smokey, how are you doing? Oh, man, I am good. I am better than Bob Stoops right now because I would be willing to bet at this point in time Bob Stoops is going to be out of a coaching job in the UFL next season. If he comes back, it'll be a tragedy at this point. Man, how can a defensive coach not put together a defense whatsoever? Um, but anyway, I'm um, doing good, doing good. How are you, Alex? I'm I'm better than, uh, let me think, Defenders fans. Yeah, I'm better mm. than Defenders fans. Had a chance, no AJ McCarron, still couldn't finish off the Battle Hawks, and then the Brahmas took care of business, and you are out two weeks ahead of schedule. No more playoffs, no excitement. Got outplayed by a backup quarterback. <laughs> That's what you get. I guess Jordan Tamer wasn't 100% either. No. Nah. Um, that was pretty clear. But the Renegades, I mean, it, it feels like for once it wasn't the defense that lost that game. Yeah. This time it, fe- it felt like you kind of you're underscoring as well, right? You can score 20 points usually or should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it was almost the tell of two halves. The the first half, uh, the Brahmas absolutely dominated. And then in the second half, the Renegades had a chance to come back. And they blew it right at the end. They could have won that game. Absolutely. But yes, their offense was not firing in the first half. And their defense was halfway decent in the second half. However, it's just not enough. And I am sick of Bob Stoops at this point. I can't wait till next season so I can just pick another team. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to get on maybe, to another Maybe you just team. get another coach. Well, that, maybe that, you get another coach, keep Luis Perez, and then you can stick with the Renegades. Last year they were good. Yeah, 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 maybe so. It was still Bob Stoops, though. But, um, yeah, may, maybe so. A new coach might just change things, and I can stick with them. Let's uh, think of some ideas. Of who would be a good uh, XFL head coach or UFL head coach next year? Mm. See some replacements there. But let's talk about Week Nine. We got some matchups here. Some uh, some interesting. Well, more or less interesting. Just some of them just interesting to see about the score. Um, there's one that interests me the most, but we'll get to that first. Uh, let's start off with the Battle Hawks and the Renegades. Yeah, Manny Wilkins. I actually mentioned him before the season started in our first episode of the UFL. Uh, this season and i thought maybe he had a chance at uh coming in and playing but of course mccarran came back and put the kibosh on that of course you're going to play mccarran but who knows if mccarran is going to be able to play is he out for the rest of the season you think he's going to come back he needs to come back if they're going to have a chance at winning this championship however they did get the job done so it's not that big of a deal for right now, but you're going to need him for the playoffs. On the other side, like I said, the Renegades are absolutely horrible. They they have a potent offense that uh, seems like they're done with the season at this point in time. Luis Perez is still playing his heart out, though, to tell you the truth. It wasn't his fault they lost once again. It usually is not. Uh, he's not been absolutely dominant the entire season, but he has been one of the top three to four quarterbacks the entire season. And Luis Perez is probably one of the best spring league quarterbacks we've seen in the modern era here. But uh, Sal Canella also, the tight end, I, that is another bright spot on this team. But other than that, they just can't get the job done. The defense is absolutely horrible. Um, however, with Manny Wilkins and Jacob Sailors, Wayne Gallman actually played a little more than Jacob Sailors this week. No Jacor Pearson out there is also going to hurt them in the long run. Hopefully he's able to get back, but Hakeem Butler is still probably the best wide receiver in here. And Jake Sutherland looks great. So Anthony Bench has a problem, um... You know what? I'm not not even going to say it's a problem. Because if Manny Wilkins can continue to produce on the ground like this, they may be not as good as McCarron being out there. But they may be sufficient to make it all the way to the championship. They're just going to need him for the championship if they ever plan on beating the Stallions. As for this one, it's obvious. I I thought about taking the Renegades just because the, the predictions are kind of over for me at this point. I took the Renegades last week just because I had nothing else to lose. And uh, we see how that turned out. Uh, taking the Battle Hawks at home or on the road, sorry. Yeah, on the road. Yeah, mm-hmm. give me Battle Hawks as well. See, 
I'm, I don't have a doubt that A.J. McCarron will come back for the playoffs, but what they've done last week by winning with a backup quarterback against D.C. is they've earned the luxury to not have to rush him back because they're already in the playoffs. They are set. The only question is, will the the uh, XFL championship be held in St. Louis or will it be held in San Antonio? But that is not on enough of like an importance, I think, to rush back your like banged up, not 100% quarterback, who you need in any case in the playoffs, no matter where you're playing. So they can afford that luxury of keeping him out another week, maybe even keeping him out another two weeks, because Manny Wilkins, while not on the same level, did a good enough job, and he won the game, and he beat the defenders when he needed to. Plus, he has that, he adds that extra element on the ground, which usually the Battlehawks do not have. This is as pure of a passing team as you'll find in spring football. And now with Manny Wilkins... You know, they can get some things done. They can play the read option. They've had some fun. And I have no doubt that no matter who's the starting quarterback, like I said last week, it won't matter. They're going to beat the defenders. And this week again, they're going to beat the renegades no matter who the starting quarterback is because the team surrounding the quarterback is of so so much of a higher quality. So I will take the Battle Hawks to win at Arlington. Now here's one that I find a little bit interesting because this is the last potential... Um, foreshadowing of the UFL championship. We saw the Stallions play the Battlehawks, and this time they are playing against the other XFL team that's going to make the playoffs. They're playing at San Antonio to face the Brahmas. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think there's a doubt here, but there's always a chance because the, everything is wrapped up. You know, how, how is this going to go? Or the, the, who's going to sit? We we know that the Stallions' defense is not the best in the league as it looked like at one point in time. But uh, either way, they still got the job done uh, against the Roughnecks. And the Roughnecks actually put up points in that game. But I, I think it could be a symptom of them just sitting some defensive players or just holding back in general. Adrian Martinez, not the best day passing, although he did throw for, I believe, three touchdowns, two or three. So he, uh, I don't know if that hurts his MVP uh uh, hopes there having the interception or not but then again his uh opponent in that race is likely out for maybe weeks to come who knows uh ricky person uh taking over as the main running back in that offense it was one of the best decisions of the season <clears throat> oh this might be a tight end MVP battle right here. Jay Sternberger versus Cody Latimer. Man, Quentin Dormandy had one of the best weeks I've ever seen him play since we've been watching these spring leagues. Uh, John Lovett also um, is probably the number one running back in the league at this point. John Trey Kirkland. Man, this is this should be a great offensive battle. Especially we know the Stallions are letting up points at this point. This should be a really good Skip Holtz versus Wade Phillips. It's a, it's a battle as old as time right there. But you still have to go with the Stallions, even though the Brahmas should have a chance in this game. The Stallions still want an undefeated season, so they need this win just for the bragging rights, if nothing else. I will stick with the Stallions on the road. Yeah, that's the only the only goal at this point, I, I figure, for, for Birmingham, because everything is clinched already. Uh, that 10 and 0 is something that they haven't done yet the past few seasons as dominant as they've been and that is that is on slate for this year and the Brahmas are the last big step to take the big hurdle I I also agree with you I think they'll get it done they also have the luxury of having two even three elite spring league quarterbacks on that roster for Birmingham so if they decide to rest someone it's no problem you know, depth is there a little bit of injury concern on the defensive side since the middle of the season. Unfortunately, Scooby Wright's out. But um, they, they've they recovered, and they've kind of, you know, they, they've stuck with it. They're 8-0. There's nothing not to like as a Stallions fan. So they keep going, and they put one on the Brahmas and officially beat every team in the league and uh, show that they'll be favored going forward for the playoffs no matter who they're going to be playing. Now, Sunday games. We have two games going in parallel there, and the first one has, well, these are the completely meaningless games, but the Defenders and the Showboats with some honor on the line. <laughs> well, this is kind of a tank bowl at this point in time, right? Uh, Jordan Tayamu, like you mentioned earlier, he did play. He was not 100%, but he kept the Defenders in that game and gave the Battlehawks a run for the money. 
Uh, Darius Hagens is now their lead running back because Cameron Harris has absolutely fallen off. He only had three runs in this entire game. I don't know if he's feeling the injuries or what's going on there, but the, their lead running back is no longer the lead running back. Um, Alex Ellis, four for 58 with one touchdown. I like Alex Ellis. You know, I never was a Tennessee fan, but I love seeing guys that I used to watch in the SEC excel in these uh the spring league so it's always fun to see him out there on the other side there's nothing to be happy about we did get a josh love appearance which is kind of cool to see him back after his run with the panthers last year but uh other than that it doesn't matter case cook is josh love whoever they throw out there daywood davis and Vinny papale are the highlights of this team i do like say charada tight end but they are absolutely abysmal on offense and defense the defenders should get a win here in a meaningless game on the road. Uh, you know what? Yeah, kinda. But I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb just for entertainment purposes <laughs> only, because these games are so meaningless. I'll take the boats, because <laughs> to me, like they. Here's why: I want to see them have a better record at the end of the season than the Renegades and the the, the Roughnecks. And to me, that's because. They kind of started off, and for most of the year, they've been the like better team, the slightly more promising-looking team. And uh, I, I just want them to be the one team to get that win. Uh, if Case Cookers can put one together, I think it's fine. I mean, they, they, had, they had a close one going against the Panthers. They may well have won it. I think they're overdue one, and I think the defenders are the team that it's probably going to happen against. So... Boats go to two and seven. They're going to be sixth in the power rankings when it's all said and done, or maybe even fifth. If they beat the defenders now, maybe we have to consider that. But they are a better team than uh, than Arlington and Houston uh, for the season average, and I think it should be reflected in the record. So, for no other reason other than sympathy, I'm taking the boats. Get it done here against the defenders. I also don't like the defenders, so whenever they lose, uh, whenever I have an opportunity to, to pick them to lose, I will take it. <laughs> and speaking of the Roughnecks, they are hosting the Panthers. At the same time today, mm. what do you think about this one? Well, I wish we could have seen Bryce Perkins play for the entire season. They've been really fortunate at quarterback to hit on quite a few guys this season. But Bryce Perkins looks phenomenal out there. Great running quarterback. Now we have a ton of backup running quarterbacks in this league that are showing out. Matt Colburn, Samson Nakua is an absolute star. Imagine if they had him all season too. Cole Hikatini is back to top shape. On the other side, there is nothing to be happy about. Not even Mark Thompson, who was at once the best running back in this league or the previous iterations of this league. Cheeks. Kiki Chisholm looked great, though, uh, on the work that he did get. But Curtis Johnson is an offensive coach that can't put together an offense. Now, you can say they scored a ton of points uh, technically against the Stallions. But like I said, it's, they had nothing to play for. They're going to let them score. They're just going to make sure they win the game. It doesn't matter at this point. The Panthers should take this one on the road. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, again, none of these teams have anything to play for except some honor. Panthers are 6-2. and two. They've just been getting it done. They have the best kicker in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the best special teams unit overall in the league. Uh, and just, again, it showed last weekend when they managed to, to outlast the showboats. Um, the only thing that concerns me about the Panthers is that carousel of quarterbacks. Not because the results aren't there, just because I'm like superstitious about... A bunch of quarterbacks rotating, probably for no rational reason. But I'm wondering how this will carry into the playoffs. Quarterback one is out, quarterback two is out. Uh, they, their quarterback room is completely different now than what they started the season with. They're still getting it done, mind you. They're winning games, uh, and they're, they're using the passing game. But uh, I have this irrational fear of quarterback rotations. It just seems to not make sense for professional football. Even when teams win, it's hard for me to stomach. But right now, the Panthers are doing it. Whether that's going to be something that works against the Stallions, however, will be a whole different debate. Uh, I'm not so confident in that, but the Roughnecks are arguably the worst team, or second worst, in the league. So Panthers get this one as well. We only disagreed on the third game, right? The mm -hmm. Defenders and Showboats? Hey, yeah. For pure entertainment purposes? Yeah. Okay. Great, so we'll, we'll stick with that. We have sort of an idea uh, up our sleeves to make next week's predictions a lot more interesting. 
um, if something that that we're like, I think we can do it. We can do it next week. Well, we're not going to. Should we? Should we say what we're doing next week? Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay. Uh, we're because the playoffs are over and our prediction game. We have there's like a huge gap right. I'm leading by seven points, I believe. So it's mm-hmm. nigh on impossible that you'll catch that you'll catch me. Um, we could have like we're thinking we'll have a, a week where we predict the, the games at random. So like draw a name out of a hat and I'll say, okay, Smokey, you now have to justify why the Renegades are beating the Stallions. <laughs> or like I'll draw the, the Roughnecks, I have to say why the Roughnecks are beating the St. Louis or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that, that, that could be pretty fun because it will like give you a reason to come up with a creative idea in week 10 uh, to pick whatever team you're forced with. This doesn't really matter uh, who's winning anymore anyway. And then the playoffs obviously come around and then it will matter. And we'll be back with that as well. All right, so let's talk about the MVPs and, uh, well, the MVP rankings for the UFL this week. Mm -hmm. Smokey, we have a couple of names that are still candidates. What are we thinking here? How do you approach this question? Well, I think there's possibly four names, to tell you the truth. I mean, of course, everybody's going to talk about the most likely candidates, which is Adrian Martinez and AJ McCarron, right? But what if it's not a quarterback because of the lack of games that those two names have played? You know, with A.J. McCarron being out for possibly the rest of the season, that might hurt his running, right? And then you have A.J. Martinez, who was rotating game for game uh, at the beginning of the season. And um, who knows? They may even sit him for a game at the end, maybe in Week 10 or something. There's two other names. Uh, John Lovett, we mentioned him, probably the best running back in this league that could be thrown into that mix. And then there's also the kicker for the Panthers, which is Jake Bates. What if they pick a kicker to be the MVP? Would it actually look bad on the league if we say, okay, (laughs) the UFL's MVP was a kicker? Is that going to hurt the league? Or do you think it's a great novel thing that we could do for the league? I don't know about that one. See, the thing is, it's going to be a kicker who will get gobbled up by the NFL like the day mm-hmm. after the championship if Michigan makes it that far. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's, that, I don't know. I have a very hard time seeing, like, given the state of professional football today, seeing a non-quarterback win an MVP. I'm not categorically opposed to it by any means, but I have a hard time seeing it. So to me, we're really down to two candidates. In fact, I have a pretty... Um, a pretty strong favorite at this point, mm-hmm. but I'll let you go first, and uh, maybe you have like a ranking or something, and then I'll I'll tell you where I'm going. Oh, I think I know where you're going. You're probably going with Adrian Martinez, and I think AJ McCarron to me is still in number one. He's only missed one game at this point in time, but it's going to drop with each week that he misses, of course. But I think right now it's still A.J. McCarron, number one, Adrian Martinez, number two, which he could easily overtake him in the next couple of weeks or so. And then third would probably be John Lovett and then Jake Bates at the very end. All right. So I'm going uh, I'm going Adrian Martinez. Actually, in fact, I would probably take him over the rest of the field at this point. And uh, I'll tell you why. Last time we talked about this, we had him very closely at the, like, one or two with McCarron. In fact, I think I favored McCarron slightly uh, at that point. But the big thing, of course, is McCarron has missed a game, and he might miss another game or two, depending on how much St. Louis is feeling the urge to bring him back. And since they've already clinched the playoffs, they probably don't have any. Uh, and Manny Wilkins has been doing a serviceable job last week. So there's a chance that they'll just simply keep him out for the next two weeks, right? Just, like, let him recover from injury, then it's week 10 and nothing matters anymore, so you rest all your starters anyway. So there's a chance McCarron's played his last regular season snap already. Now, Adrian Martinez, while he's also a top two, three passing quarterback over the season, not even having played uh, every single game or having been in the rotation, he leads the league in rushing. Not for quarterbacks, but for players. (laughs) And that's, I, I think you can't ignore that. Now, I know that when we were talking about the NFL last 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 year, he said Lamar Jackson was, probably wasn't a very deserving MVP because uh, he was like overall like a thousand yards passing behind the rest. He made up for it in rushing to a degree, though. Um, now, I realize I'm making the argument for Martinez, but his like passing skill-wise or passing ability 
is on par with those top guys with Perez and McCarron and, and Chase Garbers when he was playing. Um, the reason that he doesn't have the exact amount of yards is because they just call his number in the run game and they also tend to run the ball when they are at the goal line. Uh, Ricky Persons leading the league in rushing touchdowns uh, also for Birmingham. So that kind of explains why that is. I think he's just as capable of a quarterback when you call his number to make a game-winning drive. He will do it as a passer, but he adds that in an, uh, I think, one or two weeks out and just how ridiculously dominant the Birmingham offense or yeah, general point production has been um, throughout the whole league. And he's been one of those the key players that's been facilitating that. And somehow they find one of those quarterbacks seemingly every year. Uh, last year was Alex Magoo, who was the runaway MVP. Uh, before the, the year before that, it was J.M.R. Smith, who is still on the roster, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, any quarterback seems to look good, but how much of a product of the system is that, and how much is it a quarterback? With the with the Battlehawks, we can say that like AJ McCarron has made this this team better, no doubt, right? And he's got these receivers that he's familiar with now, so that's like a synergy with him and the system. Uh, in Birmingham. Since the quarterback's changing every year, it's harder to say, but it sure looks as if it is the case anyway. Uh, so I'm, I'm going Martinez. Also, of course, he plays for the Stallions, mm. which is my favorite team. <laughs> uh, but I, I think I think he's earned it. I think he's earned he's earned the starting spot, which we did not think he would do. We thought that Matt Corral uh, would come in um, being favored. They rotated for a while, and eventually we settled on Martinez. Leads the league in rushing. He will possibly, by the end of the year, uh, lead the league in passing touchdowns. He's currently one behind A.J. McCarron. And if McCarron misses another game, Martinez will have him there as well. Uh, passing yards are not far behind. And passer rating, I mean, he clears the rest of the league by 10 points in passer rating. Also something that's quite noteworthy, only two interceptions in the whole season. So statistically speaking, Adrian Martinez in every, almost every conceivable category should be the runaway favorite for MVP. In fact, I would give him a 70% chance Today, if I had to bet, I would give him a seventy percent chance. I don't know if you're a little bit more concerned mm. there. I've, yeah, I wouldn't give him a seven. Well, I guess it all depends on if McCarron's going to come back. Which, like you said, there is a great chance that he doesn't because they're winning, and it doesn't even matter at this point if they take a loss before the end of the season. But what if what what if Adrian Martinez? sits also and rest for the playoffs there is a possibility maybe that gives uh, the third and fourth option uh, a chance to get into the race also it does open the door that's right yeah i don't know though i do, I, I have a hard time seeing a third player at this point a kicker i just don't see a kicker mm-hmm. and then like i would think hakeem butler but I mean, he's, he's by far the best receiver in the league, that's true. Oh, absolutely. But he he also missed half the season. He also missed some time. Mm-hmm. No defensive player has been like, exceptionally outstanding, like Breland Speaks was last year, uh, for example. Mm-hmm. Or Frank Ginder, know. right? Well, I guess... Oh, G- Ginder was good, like, yeah, the league, league we're talking in, about. But, uh, tackles and interceptions at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Man, too bad Bryce Perkins didn't play all season. I know he's only had a limited number of uh, snaps, but he had a 213.4 rating last week. I feel like Bryce Perkins could have been in that race also if he would have played the entire season. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, right now it's it's going to be all up to McCarron if he's going to win or if he's going to give it to Adrian Martinez. Probably. McCarran but then again, it may be out of this week. Maybe out and of this mm-hmm. yeah. It's it's on both. Like if Mc, if we know McCarron will play this week, and we know they're both playing another two weeks, mm-hmm. it's close. It's like sixty forty, and I'm favoring Martinez because of the the passer rating difference, and because he has the extra element on the ground while still being just as good a passer. But it it would be close. But if McCarron drops another game where he doesn't play. I, I can only see it be Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Point. If he plays. If he also yeah, plays. exactly, yeah. Yes, if he plays out and McCarron does not, then yes, I think it's going to be Adrian Martinez's uh, trophy to win. If I had to bet, I'll, I'll put it on him. 
Stallions go for a three-peat and back-to-back -back MVPs also. What what else could we possibly want? There's nothing else you could want out of spring football, right? That's all <laughs> That's all you need? <laughs> yeah, all uh, well, you want. I was yeah. about to say for Luis Perez to win a championship, but but then again, oh, he did win well, one last, last season. He did, yeah, he won the XFL, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So there yeah. you have it. There you have it. Mm -hmm. Actually, the the even better thing is, of course, if, it, if the the Battle Hawks and Stallions both win their conferences, which they're both currently favored to do, <laughs> that would be the the optimal season for me. Oh, the ten and zero still. That's why. That's why Martinez, because they're not they're not benching him because they're going for the ten and zero. Mm -hmm. the, the perfect season still alive, so that's why they're bringing the full guns. There you go. Know. That's my argument. Drop that. They could bring in Matt Corral, though, and still get those two. Well, I guess they are facing yeah. the Brahmas. They need him this week. Uh, who's on the, who's Most on likely the, they could. Who's on the schedule for the Stallions next week? Uh, next week, let me see. Probably some, probably, maybe Michigan. Could it be? Ooh. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Michigan at Burnham. Oh, Ooh, that's wow. a That's going to be the preview for the following week's uh, yeah. like playoff game. Yeah, so they hmm. may play two weeks in a row. That's not two toughies. That's, that's uh, true. If they want an undefeated season, they're going to have to keep Martinez. And you could risk it with Corral because they were winning also with Corral, just not as dominantly. Uh, could risk it. But yeah. Clayton Dormady just had his best game, maybe of his career. Definitely yeah. of his season last week. So which I means don't he's probably take any chances. <laughs> which means he's probably going to have a bad week this coming week. <laughs> possible hey, but you don't want to take the chances <laughs> <laughs> you gotta beat everyone right and including yeah. the panthers twice mm. so i would be i'd be careful i want that perfect season now like skip holds the uh, stallions have already accomplished everything you can possibly accomplish in spring football with championships with uh you know beating the the, the renegades to, to start the season with an mvp with pretty much everything the undefeated season is the rarest of achievements and that's uh that's on the line now Mm -hmm. Two more, two more games, and that'll be a great streak. But we will keep following that. Uh, for to our viewers, if you have any opinions on this, let us know. Uh, to us, pretty clear. Martinez, McCarron with an outside chance. Smokey's a little bit more open there with a couple of non-quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. To me personally, I'm pretty, I'm pretty locked down onto the quarterbacks at this point. That's just how football works with the MVP discussion. Uh, if anyone has another, like a, maybe a dark horse candidate that we haven't talked about, please let us know. Uh, but in any case, share your opinions on who you think is going to win this MVP. And do the Stallions continue uh, and, and complete the 10-0 season? I guess that's going to be the most exciting part of next week's video as well, if mm -hmm. they win this week. That's mm -hmm. what it's going to be all about. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, Smokey. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I would be scared of Bryce Perkins if I were you and the other Stallions fans. But other than that, that's it for this week. Okay, I'm not. For the record, <laughs> I am not. But if you were a Stallions fan, you certainly would be. That's that's fine. You can be on my behalf. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. All right, then uh, thank you, everybody, for watching the video. Drop us a like. Let us know what you think. And we're going to see you in the next one. Deuces.